There are plenty of mysteries in Westworld Season 3. Here are my top seven that I think will be really important as the season develops. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. I'll be covering Westworld Season 3 in full, so if you want episode breakdowns, explanations, live discussions and much more, please click the subscribe button in the bottom right of your screen and the bell icon. Season 3 of Westworld already has us guessing on a lot of mysteries. As with previous seasons, all will be revealed before the end. But until then, let's speculate on some of the most important ones. Number 1. Who shot Caleb? In episode 1 we were introduced to Caleb. It was through his eyes that we experienced the outside world, not just at the multi-billionaire level, as Dolores seems to have brought herself into, but the life for most people, managed by technology and algorithms, little opportunity for independence, and even crime being run through an app. Amidst this, we are shown Caleb's backstory, or hints of it at least. He seems to have been in the military, having only relatively recently left, and is now in some sort of support and rehabilitation programme. In particular, as we saw, he seemed to be having to take calls from what appears to have been an AI of his dead friend Francis, and to go to counselling sessions, where he's told how to work within the system to achieve the best he can. But he still seems to be suffering from some kind of PTSD connected to his time in the military, his friendship with Francis, and possibly Francis's death. The limited shots we have seen also curiously seem to show him not in traditional army gear for this. Was this some kind of covert mission, or black ops? To add to the mystery, in episode one he stares down someone pointing a gun at him, saying that it wouldn't be the first time he'd been shot in the head. Has he really been shot in the head before? How did he survive? Are they trying to hint that he's actually a host, or something like that? The showrunners definitely went to great lengths to show us the similarities between the hosts in Westworld and the lives of ordinary humans in the real world, and his ill mother even says to him, you're not my son. We're led to believe that that's dementia talking, but we can't be sure. There are lots of mysteries around Caleb that will only be answered when we know more about his past. Who shot him in the head? What happened to his buddy Francis? And is he even truly human? 2. What's going on with Bernard? While Bernard's plotline has on the face of it been the most straightforward so far in Season 3, in particular there are two things going on with him that are peculiar. First, there's the button that he pressed when threatened that temporarily turned him into a killing machine before he clicked it off again to become mild-mannered Bernard once more. Where did he get it from? Did he invent it? Is it just a way to quickly change his attributes so he's really good at fighting, like Maeve did to herself or Dolores did to Teddy, or is it something more fundamental than that? He seems to treat it as if it's some kind of split personality. When he clicks it, he says, remember yourself, and please don't hurt them too much, as if he's talking to someone else. Are there two people inside Bernard now? Also, although it's understandable why Bernard might want to self-test himself to see if Dolores had been manipulating him, she had rebuilt him personally so could have done anything to his coding, it does prompt some questions about timing. We're given to understand that Bernard's timeline is happening around 90 days after the events of Season 2, but when he does the self-diagnosis, he calls it test number 342. Has he really been doing three or four tests every day for all that time? And when he was testing for corruptions in the Mesa Hub, he searched back over the last 200 days, not 90. Bernard's story may seem straightforward so far, but we're not being told the whole story with him. 3. What is Dolores's plan? At the heart of us not knowing about Bernard is the fact that we still don't know for certain why Dolores brought him back. She gave us some rather vague explanation at the end of Season 2, saying that the hosts would need both of them, but she also said that she knew he would oppose her, which he is trying to do. 
Why did she use one of her five memory pearls on him when she could have brought another ally? If she thinks she is going to succeed in her plan, she could always bring Bernard back after she is finished, rather than now when he could get in her way. This strongly implies that she has plans for him now. Perhaps Bernard is right that she has put something inside his coding that will be activated at some point. But even more broadly, what is she trying to achieve in the outside world? She's clearly trying to get to Rehoboam, the AI at the heart of so many lives, but does she want to destroy it or use it? Does she want to destroy humanity or subjugate them? Perhaps it is just revolution against insight. There will be rioting in the streets before the end of this season. 4. Who is testing the machine? Partway through episode 1, there is an interesting scene where Dolores spies on Liam Dempsey Jr., meeting a mystery woman who basically accuses him of intentionally or unintentionally letting someone access Rehoboam and test it. The data has been throwing up some discrepancies, apparently. He denies it, but it seemingly prompts Martin Connells, his security guy, to do some more investigation into Dolores, his new girlfriend, and we do have to ask whether Dolores might have gained access somehow. It soon becomes apparent that any access she could get through Liam Dempsey would only allow her peripheral access. It's Serac who can really get into it. If it was Dolores, what did she do? And if it wasn't, who else could it have been? Season 3 will circle around issues of access to Rhea Boehm, so these are crucial questions. 5. What is the link between Delos and Insight? Insight are clearly the big, mysterious and sinister organisation at the heart of Season 3, much like Delos was in Seasons 1 and 2, but are the two organisations linked in some way? They are clearly both in the same business, data gathering and mapping, specifically mapping human brains, and Delos technology seems to be in widespread use around the world, much like Insight seems to be running the lives of most of the world. None of this proves an official connection, of course, but the links keep coming. The person Dolores targets at the start of episode one, Jerry, was an executive at Insight, and also a visitor to Westworld. The same goes for Martin Connells, and when Bernard looks him up on the system, he discovers that Liam Dempsey is a regular visitor to Westworld, having been there no less than 17 times, and reached the rank of Golden Gunslinger. He can clearly afford it, but he also clearly really, really likes it. And Jerry, as well as being an executive at Insight, was a large shareholder, and therefore part owner, of Delos. Finally, we have that meeting I mentioned a moment ago between Liam Dempsey and a mystery woman. She accuses him of allowing a data breach, and he tells her that she should be more concerned about what happened with Delos. It's not spelt out, but the implication is that the Serac-controlled part of Insight, at least, has business links with Delos. Given that Delos is now being run by the host pretending to be Charlotte, this will be very important. Talking of which... 6. Which host is inside Charlotte Hale? The mystery of which host Dolores brought with her off the island has been there since the end of Season 2, but I think we will soon get some answers on this. We know that one of the five is Bernard, and another is now inside Martin Connells. My guess is that one is Angela. But of course, the biggest mystery is who is inside Charlotte Hale. I've done a whole other video on this if you want to check it out and see who I think it is, but I think we will discover soon enough, probably in episode 3. Finally, 7. Where's the Man in Black? We last saw William, the Man in Black, lying badly injured at the end of season 2. His entire life will be in ruins. His wife committed suicide when she realised who he really was. He killed his own daughter by mistake and his whole life's work with Westworld and the data collection destroyed. What will he do next? He seems to have checked out of day-to-day -day life. It seems likely that the AI representative at the Delos board meeting was for him, and what we see of him in the trailers is not looking good for him. 
He's going back to his old haunts, recreating where his wife lost her life, shooting a mirror, and so on. Or are all of these things just his imagination? Will he be in some kind of mental hospital, as he looks like he is here, visited by the ghosts of his past? All of this is possible, but his story will intersect again with the wider story at some point. If this is his lowest point, how will he start pulling himself back up? Will he finally embark on some kind of redemption arc? Here, he does seem less man in black and more man in white. If you think you know what the answers to any of these mysteries are, let me know in the comments section below, or join me on Sundays at 5pm EST for my pre-show livestream. In Deep Geek, we'll be covering Season 3 of Westworld in full. The link to my Westworld Season 3 playlist is on the left of your screen and in the description below, so please click on that if you want more episode breakdowns, discussions and theory videos about this season. Or if you'd like to support In Deep Geek, or get access to some of the content I create exclusively for my patrons, please click on the link on the right of your screen. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you again soon.